Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking all things skin purging, but more specifically, I'm gonna be giving you a rundown of the ingredients which, when introduced into your skincare routine for the first time, could trigger your skin to purge. So if you wanna know a little bit more about purging, or maybe you're thinking about introducing a skincare ingredient to your routine for the first time, and want to know if it's on the purge list, keep on watching. Skin purging at its basis is um, similar to a breakout. In fact, it can be really difficult to tell between the two. But purging, I like to see as the body becoming adjusted to a new ingredient that you're including for the first time. Any ingredient which increases the rate of cellular turnover, that's when our body gets rid of the old skin cells and introduce the new ones, reveals the radiant, gorgeous skin beneath. Anything which increases that rate of cellular turnover could trigger a purge. That's because we've got a lot of things going on in the lower levels of our skin. Things like microcomodomes, which are the first stages in a spot forming. This could be a blockage or a, a pool of oil in the skin, but this microcomodome erupts when it reaches the surface of the skin. Anything which removes those surface levels of skin um, quicker will obviously cause it to rise through the levels of the skin faster. When it erupts, it appears either as a whitehead or as a spot. This is what we term purging. It usually happens within the first 10 days of the introduction of a new ingredient into our skincare routine and doesn't last too long. It should have stopped at about day 14. It can be a little bit alarming because a lot of the products which trigger purging we use to improve the appearance of our skin. So when it gets worse before it gets better, it can be a little bit disconcerting and can be a bit worrying. But I always think of purging as something that was going to happen anyway. These microcomedones exist and they're going to erupt at some point anyway. And the purge is just getting it all out of the way in one go so you can look forward to the gorgeous skin afterwards. However, if you follow these hints and tips, you can minimize the rate of purging and I'll talk you through the ingredients that could cause purging so you kind of forewarned as to what to expect. First up is hydroxy acids, more commonly known as exfoliating acids. These come in three different categories. The alpha hydroxy acids, such as glycolic acid or lactic acid, the beta hydroxy acids, such as salicylic acid, and the polyhydroxy acids, such as gluconolactone. Whatever you call them or however you categorize them, all of these will increase the rate of cellular turnover because they sloth off that top layer of skin cells. Exfoliation is fantastic because it gets rid of all those dead skin cells which are causing our skin to appear dull. It'll also help to even out the skin tone, so everybody should have an exfoliator in their routine at some point. Because it's removing those surface levels of skin, it will increase the rate of cellular turnover, which is why exfoliating acids can cause a purge. In my experience, all exfoliating acids are equally as likely to cause a purge, so switching it between the different ones I don't think makes a meaningful difference. One way I do think you can minimize the rate of purging when you first introduce an exfoliating acid is to introduce it in the form of a cleanser rather than a serum. Because you're washing it off the skin after, say, 60 seconds, cleansing acids aren't going to be as powerful as a leave-on treatment or serum. Exfoliating acids and cleansers will still give you a great exfoliation, but it happens on a much more slower basis. And so it doesn't increase that rate of cellular turnover quite as quickly at the start. And so you're less likely to see that initial purge. One of my absolute favorites is this. This is the Face Theory Clarifying Cleanser. This has AHA and BHA acids in here. So it gives a really good exfoliation, but because you're washing it off after say 60 seconds, it's less likely to cause that initial purge. You will still get some risk of purging even with a um, a cleanser with an exfoliating acid in, but you do minimize it a little bit. A lot of people will say that fruit acids are less likely to cause a purge. This is totally, totally false. They work in exactly the same way as all other acids. They take off the top layer of skin and so increase the rate of cellular turnover. So whether you're opting for a traditional acid or a fruit acid or an enzyme exfoliator, all exfoliators could cause a purge. So that's something to bear in mind. The myth that fruit acids don't is totally false. The same way that scrubs, if you're using a mechanical exfoliation such as a scrub, that too can cause a purge. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now let's move on to retinoids. Retinoids are a category of ingredient which can include retinoids retinols, retinals, retinoic acid, retinol palmitate, it can be adapalene, it can be called isotretinoin. A whole host of different things can be categorized as retinoids, but at the basis they're vitamin A derivatives. I think of all the ingredients, retinoids are the ones most likely to trigger a purge and the ones that have caused purging in my skin most in the past. That's because they're super effective at increasing that rate of cellular turnover. In fact, that's why they work so well. So I always think sometimes a purge is a sign that a product is working well because what retinoids will do is increase that rate of cellular turnover, which will diminish the appearance of fine 
fine lines and wrinkles. It will also smooth out the skin's surface and even out the skin's tone, which is fantastic, and all the things we love them for. But because it's so effective, it can cause all of those um, things going on in the lower levels of the skin to rush to the surface at one time and trigger a purge. I don't think there's a lot you can do to prevent a retinoid purge. It's one of those things you just have to go through to get to the gorgeous skin at the other side. And I would say it's definitely, definitely worth including a retinoid in your skincare routine. Just pick the right one for you. There are some hints and tips you can follow, and I covered all of these in a separate video, which I'll leave a link to up there. Also has some great, great recommendations for the best retinols per skin type. So check that out if you don't have one in your routine at the moment. And I think one of the top hacks for minimizing the rate of purging when first introducing a retinoid is to pick the right one for your skin type because of course if you do have a purge you don't want sensitivity redness and irritation on top of that so choose the right one for your skin type and that will help minimize any discomfort that you get from the product Another ingredient which can cause purging is benzoyl peroxide. This is the one I think most people are shocked by because a lot of people include benzoyl peroxide in their routine to help fight acne. It's fantastic at fighting acne because it'll help minimize the acne causing bacteria and it'll also help increase the rate of cellular turnover so they'll heal quicker. And therein lies the issue when it comes to purging. Because it's increasing that rate of cellular turnover, it also causes everything happening under the skin to rush to the surface and could cause a purge. Again, I do want to stress the point that all it's doing is bringing things that already existed to the surfaces and getting them out of the way in one go which in my book isn't always a bad thing however as with the retinoids if you want to minimize the impact of or the risk of purging when you first introduce a benzoyl peroxide into your routine i would suggest introducing it gradually use it maybe every third day then build up to every other day and then every day once your skin has become adjusted to the product that's going to minimize the side effects completely so you're going to get less redness irritation and peeling but also it it'll minimize the risk of that first initial purge, which can happen at about day 10 on benzoyl peroxide. Now, finally, we're going to come on to vitamin C. This is the one that can be a little bit confusing because it very much depends on the type of vitamin C that you're using and the strength of vitamin C as to the risk of purging from the product. If you use a pure form vitamin C, something like an ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid in a high strength, that is going to create increase the rate of cellular turnover. And that is when you could see a purge. If you use a lower strength vitamin C and go for a vitamin C derivative, then that's not going to increase the rate of cellular turnover anywhere near as much as a pure form of vitamin C will and so you will minimize the risk of a purging. If you want to introduce a vitamin C into your routine but don't want the associated purge I would recommend you go for a vitamin C derivative. Much more gentle, works in the long term but you'll see those results a little bit slower at first and I pulled together a video on my favorite vitamin C derivatives which I'll leave a link to up there because check that out, choose one of those and that can almost eradicate the risk of a purge from introducing a vitamin C into your skin care routine. Now, beyond the ones that I've mentioned, there are some other um, things which can trigger purging. Things like a chemical peel done at a dermatologist's office will, of course, bring everything to the surface. Some laser treatments and microdermabrasion can also trigger a purge. You should be having all of these done in a dermatologist's office or an esthetician's office. So you can obviously talk to them about the risk of purging as a side effect to any of these treatments. And they'll talk you through the various risks and things you can do to mitigate it. You'll have noticed niacinamide wasn't on the list of ingredients which could cause a purge. That's because it doesn't increase the rate of cellular turnover and so isn't actually causing purging. Some people do see an increased rate of spots, acne and breakouts once they introduce niacinamide into their routine. That's likely to be a breakout rather than a purge and could be because the niacinamide that you've included in your routine isn't suitable for your skin type. So I would always say to someone who's experiencing purging with a niacinamide to maybe look at switching up the formulation of the niacinamide you're using and maybe switch to a different formulation, strength, or brand. I actually left a list to my favorite niacinamides, which I'll leave a link to up there. So check that out. If you're having struggling with your niacinamide and you want to maybe switch up to a different brand, strength, or formulation, check out that video and it'll give you a full rundown. Now, before I close this video, I do just want to give you a couple of hacks of how you can reduce the rate of purging and minimize the appearance of it when it happens. One thing I always recommend is to include an azelaic acid in your skincare routine. Azelaic acid isn't like the other exfoliating acid 
acids that I mentioned earlier, it works in a different way and it calms redness and irritation in the skin. If you have an azelaic acid in your routine, if you do introduce an ingredient which triggers a purge, then that purge will be so much less noticeable because it'll take down any of the redness associated with the spots and the white heads which erupt as that purge happens and it'll just calm and soothe the skin. It also fights acne causing bacteria so it'll really minimize the length of time that you go through that purge. There are so many great azelaic acids on the market and I'll leave a link in the description box below some of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites is this. This is the Face Theory Pore Bright N10 Serum. Gorgeous azelaic acid with niacinamide in as well. Also, you could go for the Azaclear A15 serum. This is a super strength azelaic acid, which will really just minimize all of that redness, all that sensitivity, and just really calm and soothe the skin. It's also got oatmeal in, which is fantastic, again, at calming and soothing. So both of these will help diminish the appearance of the purge when it happens. You might also want to consider panthenol, which is a fantastic B vitamin, which will also help reduce redness and keep the skin hydrated. Hydrated skin heals so much better so to get over that purge quicker and to reduce the red appearance of it, I would recommend reaching for a panthenol product. This is what I use at the moment. This is the Liquid Hydration by Geek and Gorgeous. 5% panthenol, which is the strength you should be looking out for to get the maximum results. And we'll just keep the, hide, the skin hydrated so it heals better, but also will minimize the redness and the appearance of the purge when it's happening. So definitely get your hands on this if you're worried about introducing a product which has a risk of purge associated with it. So there you go, guys. I hope you found this video useful, breaking down some of the mystery out and purging. No, niacinamide doesn't cause purging. Yes, you definitely can expect some purging if you introduce a um, exfoliating acid into your routine and hopefully the hints and tips will help you minimize that. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and if you have time, leave me a comment below with your purging experience and any um, ingredients which have caused a purge to happen. Let's get the conversation going. Leave me a comment below. Take care. Bye.